Hello everyone. So in this video, we are going to discuss few microbiology related viva questions or you can say interview questions as well. Okay, so this is specifically for dental science. So if, a, if you are a student of dental science and uh, you have your viva exams or say you have interview somewhere for your internship and all, then you might get few of these questions. Okay, so in this video, we are going to discuss them. And I'm not focusing here on a particular uh, practical related topic or any specific theory related topic here. Okay, because this is a brief video and I'm going to include as many questions as I can. Okay, and which I feel are important for a student of dental science to know. Okay, so let's start. So first is what is the role of microbiology in dental science? Okay, very basic question and very important what is the role why you need microbiology in dental science so microbiology it actually provides say valuable insights to the microbiome oral microbiome then systemic health microbial testing and diagnosis mechanisms of oral diseases and the development of preventive and therapeutic strategies in the dental science okay you can have uh, you can see here uh, what the importance of microbiology is in dental science. The second is, can you explain the composition and structure of dental biofilm? So dental biofilm is a complex microbial community. Okay, so a biofilm can have a single bacterial uh, species or it can have different types of microorganisms growing together. Okay, so dental biofilms, they are complex. They adhere to the surface of your teeth or oral tissue and the biofilm it consists of a matrix okay extracellular substance that is known as polysaccharides okay it has proteins DNAs in it and that is what uh, gives protection to that particular biofilm from antibiotics okay so this is how biofilms they grow and this is how infections also grow okay so which helps so these biofilms they help to anchor the microorganisms together and protect them from host immune system and antimicrobial agents okay then what are the main microorganisms found in the oral cavity and dental biofilm so here are a few examples for example uh, for you can say for fungi uh, candida species very common and important as well in bacteria you may find uh, streptococcus mutans some actinomyces species then uh, body uh, Porphyromonas gingivalis. This is also one of the important bacteria. Then what do microorganisms contribute to dental caries or tooth decay formation? So what actually happens? You have to answer this simply, but I need to explain here so that uh, even a first year student can answer this type of question clearly. So microorganisms like Streptococcus mutans, they metabolize the dietary sugar that the person consumes okay then it produces acids and few byproducts now these acids they demineralize the enamel of the tooth which leads to cavity formation okay then the bacterial biofilms which are also known as dental plaques if they are present they adhere to the tooth surface providing a very favorable environment for these bacteria to grow and have acid production and further progression of the tooth decay okay then next question is what is pathogenicity of a microbe so this can be defined as the ability of that particular microbe to cause infection in susceptible host okay this is very important word susceptible host hmm? then next is can you discuss the relationship between oral bacteria and uh, periodontal diseases so periodontal uh, periodontal diseases they are caused by uh, interactions between oral bacteria and host immune responses okay so these interactions are actually complex interactions now certain bacteria like porphyromonas gingivalis or uh, tenerella forsythia or say trypanoma uh, denticola they are considered to be uh, periodontal pathogens okay so these pathogens they initiate inflammatory response in the gums and thus leading to tissue destruction bone loss or you can say 
progression of periodontal diseases right then next is how do bacteria interact with dental materials such as dental fillings or implants now dental fillings uh, i have seen many common people they have that believe that uh, dental fillings are very good they have good longevity and no bacterial infection can happen if you have dental fillings okay to that particular area so it is actually wrong because bacteria they can interact with dental materials by adhering to their surfaces and forming biofilms now these biofilms uh, they can lead to development of infections then peri implantitis peri implantitis okay this is a kind of infection or recurrent uh, decay carries around that dental filling now bacterial biofilm on dental material can also contribute to degradation of materials themselves affecting their longevity and the performance now what is used for sterilization okay this is actually related to the equipments some tools which are used by the uh, dental uh, specialist dental science specialist so uh, steam under pressure that is autoclaving or incineration in the flame or use of ethyl ethylene oxide okay now the sterilization is very important why so we can get a cross question on this question like why we need sterilization so the basic uh, basic answer very important answer you can give is to control or to minimize the cross contamination as we are using same tool same equipments from one person to another okay for checking their uh, health of their gums or if any person has to do root canal any person has a infection okay so we are going to use all these tools and equipments in common to everyone so we want to minimize or we want to prevent cross contamination and that's the reason why we need sterilization okay then next is how do diagnosis and uh, how do you diagnose and identify oral microbial infections in uh, dental patients okay so diagnosis and identification it actually involves combination of say clinical evaluation history of patient uh, microbiological testing then few of more important points are like clinical signs and symptoms like is there a pain swelling Uh, or is there any inflammation so this helps you to assess the presence of infection and on depending on that you may come to a conclusion that whether you need a microbiological testing uh, including taking sample such as saliva or taking sample of a dental plaque or performing the microbial cultures pcr or other molecular techniques or not and then you prescribe you have to prescribe medicine or not okay so these are all very important points when it comes to diagnosis and identification of uh, oral microbial infection then next is can you explain the principles of antimicrobial therapy in dental practice so the principles of antimicrobial therapy involves selecting a appropriate antimicrobial agent okay that is based on the suspected or identified microorganisms now suspected is where you guess you don't know what particular microbe it is which is causing the infection and identified is when you have taken uh, sample and uh, you have given it for microbial culture perform performing microbial culture okay so at that time you know what specific microorganism has caused the infection so depending on that you prescribe antimicrobials now consider you also have to consider the spectrum of the drug that you are prescribing whether it is broad spectrum whether it is narrow spectrum and the potential side effects of that as some patients they might have uh, uh, diseases such as say uh, heart related chronic diseases or diabetes or uh, any other organ related disease then you need to take that into consideration if the drug has potential side effects then the therapy aims to target and eliminate the causative organisms minimize the risk of antimicrobial resistance and optimize patient outcome while considering factors like 
dosage duration and patient compliance okay then next is uh, what is dental calculus or tartar so dental calculus or tartar is the hardened deposit that forms on the teeth due to the mineralization of dental plaques these dental plaques are actually porous and enables the absorption of harmful components of the dental plaques okay so that is a dental calculus or tartar then how are tooth caries destroyed so they are destroyed by mechanical cleaning and laurel sulfate or in case of severe decay tooth filling or crowning or tooth extraction can also be done so that this is how tooth caries are destroyed then next is what is the aim of cultivation during microbiological diagnostic why you need to cultivate to know so the aim uh, is to isolate the microorganism from the given sample and to obtain the pure culture for further examination and then detect the growth properties of that particular microorganism okay then that is the aim why we cultivate our uh, samples we want to know what particular organism is causing the infection and we need to uh, give a proper treatment to our patients so the next is the bacterial species that predominantly adheres and forms a biofilm on the surface of a salivary pellicle is which one so the answer is streptococcus mutans is the one which predominantly adheres and forms a biofilm on the surface of a salivary pellicle okay then next is bacteria are identified on the basis of what so this is very basic question so bacteria they are identified on the basis of their shape their staining their morphological and growth properties and bacterial oh sorry biochemical properties then in the formation of plaques pellicle form, formation starts within how much time so in the formation of plaques the pellicles they start formation starts within 2 to 3 minutes of your brushing okay so this is how or this is the first step of you can say formation of plaques now what are the challenges associated with the antibiotic resistance in dental microbiology so over prescription of antibiotics in dental practice then limited effectiveness of commonly used antibiotics due to resistance and necessitating alternative treatment approaches these are the challenges which are associated with antibiotic resistance then how do you how do you prevent cross contamination and maintain infection control in a dental clinic so to prevent cross contamination we ensure strict sterilization of instruments and proper disinfection of the surfaces okay then implement rigorous hand hygiene protocol for staffs and uh, use personal protective equipments consistently for example you can use uh, hand gloves each and every time you uh, see a patient okay then next is how do you prevent cross contamination uh, yeah sorry this one is a repeated question so next one is can you discuss the role of oral microbiota in oral malodor okay that is bad breath so the composition and imbalance of oral microbiota can contribute to oral malodor by producing volatile sulfur compounds okay so microbiota if it is disturbed and uh, if it the composition is of mixed bacteria and uh, there is a lot of acid production going on then it may also happen that you may feel or you may suffer from bad breath as the volatile sulfur compounds are also produced then how do you manage biofilm related infections how do you manage biofilm related infections in dental procedures such as root canal treatment so uh, managing here it involves uh, thorough cleaning and disinfection of root canal system then use of antimicrobial agents and ensuring proper sealing to prevent reinfection of the root then post treatment follow up is essential to monitor if there is any kind of issue and you need to address that 
okay the next is can you discuss the role of probiotics in promoting oral health and preventing oral diseases so probiotics can promote oral health by restoring the balance oral microbiome and inhibiting harmful bacteria and reducing the risk of conditions like tooth decay gum diseases etc then how do you educate people about importance of oral hygiene and microbial controls so educate people uh, through clear and visual demonstrations of proper brushing flossing techniques emphasizing their role in controlling harmful oral uh, microbes and you can also provide some pamphlets and personalized um, what we can say oral uh, hygiene related uh, training so that they are uh, aware of the importance of the oral hygiene and microbial control okay so these are few uh, interview or say viva related questions which i feel are important for a dental science student to know and if you have say your practicals of or you have a small interview for your internship then these are the questions that you might get and yes your skills are also important so please study thoroughly have your concept clear and i hope this video is helpful to you all so thank you for watching do like my videos do subscribe to my channel and keep supporting thank you